Hey guys, welcome to my respiratory nurse practitioner certification review. Um, it's respiratory. These are the top things that we have to know. Um, things that you really want to look out for is when you should refer and when you can treat within your scope. Let's get started. Overview, I'm going to be talking about asthma, COPD, pneumonia, and tuberculosis. Obviously, there's more, but this is what I'm focusing on. So, quick anatomy of the lungs. Right lobe, right side of the lungs has three lobes, and left side of the lungs have has two lobes. Gas exchange occurs there, and this is where oxygen and um, carbon dioxide exchange is done for the entire body. So this is quite an important organ right here. Let's jump right in and let's get started with asthma. Asthma is the narrowing of your airway and that is um, due to inflammation. This could be caused by a lot of different triggers um, such as allergies and um, environment, all sorts of different things. Medication can induce asthma, pregnancy can induce asthma. Asthma affects the very young to the very old, so um, your patient can be a wide demographic. Um, signs and symptoms that you'll see in your asthma patient is that um, shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing, chest pain. Um, you'll definitely see more flare-ups in the winter time, um, during hay season. Um, that's when asthma really, really peaks. Um, and when children are in school as well. Great thing about asthma is that asthma is reversible. If you have um, a really good set regimen for patients and they are following that, they can really, really, um, sometimes children outgrow their asthma and um, it, it, it really works well when patients are um, following their regimen. So diagnosis of asthma is done through spirometry. That is, um, that can be done in the office. Um, I usually would just refer to uh, pulmonology because all asthma patients um, should have a pulmonologist. And that's just something to just CYA as a provider. Um, that is not your specialty. Asthma, uh, you can deal with it in the office, but pulmonology, that is their specialty. That's all they do. So it's always good to have that expertise um, on that patient's team. So there's four different persistencies. There's four different um, variants of asthma. You've got your intermediate, your mild persistent, moderate persistent, and your severe. Um, so intermediate, um, according to the Genia guidelines, um, your patient that is super mild, they can have that um, Saba. However, that new guideline is going to be your inhaled corticosteroid and your long-acting beta agonist. So your in ICS and your LABA mix. And the game changer in that, I mean, that's been decades, but that's been a new standard. So your patients that are in the step-up method, step two and above is what you're going to be seeing, um, the majority of the inhaled corticosteroid as well as the lava mix. Um, so let's get started. So for your immediate intermediate patients, they're going to be getting the inhaled corticosteroid and the lava mix PRN. Mild persistent, they're going to be getting that mix daily. The moderate, they're going to be getting the inhaled corticosteroid lava with um, a singular. Um, and that fourth, um, fourth and above, I usually um, would say to refer. And the guidelines do give us um, medications that you can, but once you're getting towards that um, higher acuity, you kind of just you're not playing in that in your in your scope anymore. You are um, just to be safe. Obviously, if you work with pulmonology and you're a pulmonology nurse practitioner, this is your scope. 
that these are your people. But if you don't work with pulmonology and you're in a, a media care or something like that or urgent care or family practice, um, you want to refer patients that are higher acuity. Um, major black box warning. Labos are never to be giving alone. Um, that's a great way to increase death in your asthma patients. So just an FYI there. So these are our golden golden nuggets here, our golden um, patient medication, the inhaled corticosteroid. Um, you've got your pulmicort, full event. Um, all these are the all these are the great medications for our asthma patients. Things that I see, lots of questions around that. Um, umethicide, fulmodorol, the Simicort combination. Those are where I see a lot of the questions um, gearing to um, because the guidelines are showing them as well. So that is a good medication to know. Um, inhaled corticosteroids and... Um, Lava, you probably want to look at the endings of them. The Zol. It's got a green here. Zol. And then Tural for your lava. Let's see. Highlight here the Zol and Tural. Or uh, your inhaled corticosteroid as the Zol, S O N E, and then your Tural for your lava. And you want to remember these medications as well because they don't really quite go away um, because we got COP. Now, this is a step up method. This is the um, step one short term uh, the sabas like albuterol are not really are not really being prescribed like that um, obviously we're still going to see it but um, the golden standard the golden child um, is your inhaled corticosteroid right here and then once you get to step three, it's that low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus a lava and or medium dose inhaled corticosteroid. So they give you alternates over here and then by age too. Um, but we're not 100% getting rid of it, but we're, it's 99% across the board inhaled corticosteroid. Let's talk about COPD. COPD is chronic bronchitis and emphysema. And unlike asthma, COPD is a permanent structural change of your lungs. Um, the alveoli have actually lost that ability to do um, gas exchange effectively, um, causing um, signs and symptoms such as um, barrel chest, hyperresonance, you know, dyspnea, clubbing, chronic cough. Um, those are all things that we can see in our chronic um, bronchitis and emphysema patients. The cause of this is usually due to lifestyle. Um, 9% of the cases, 90% of the cases, or nine out of 10 of the cases are, is related to smoking and um, sometimes working in high fume areas. Um, like your firefighters and uh, people that work in chemical plants and high exposure to dust and stuff like that. Um, these are also patients that were, have asthma that um, also can have genetic components. So there's a lot of different things that um, come into effect with chronic bronchitis and emphysema, but nine times out of 10, it's our long-term smokers as well. Diagnosis for um, COPD is going to be our spirometry as well. So um, spirometry and that FEV1, FV, F0, 
VC ratio um, diagnostic for ad, uh, for COPD is going to be 70% or 0 0.70. So there's four groups of asthma. Ugh. Excuse me. There's four groups of COPD. And um, COPD is not necessarily a step-up method. Um, however, group D patients um, are the higher acuity patients. Group 1. 9 times out of 10, category 1 patients have a, um, a CAT score of less than 10. Less than or greater, or less than 10, yes. So what you want to schedule these patients on or place these patients on is the Saba. Um, Saba, so that's going to be your albuterol. Albuterol or your Laba. Um, and this is one of the very few times, uh, this, is, uh, this is the only time uh, disease process in which you can schedule a Laba alone. So COPD, you can um, give a patient a LABA long acting beta agonist by itself. So group A, you're going to be scheduling them or giving them a albuterol. Group B, um, their CAT score is usually greater than or, or than 10, but they have not been has hospitalized um, within the year. So A and B have not been hospitalized. And you're going to be giving them usually a LABA, but you can give them a LAMA. So, um, so you're, you're the cell, cell medrol. Group C, they have been hospitalized within the year. So you're going to give them a LABA. And then group D is a patient that, um, has been hospitalized and, um, their CAT score is greater than 10. And you can do the LABA-LAMA combo plus inhaled corticosteroids. Um, but nine times out of 10, um, you're going to have, you're going to be referring those patients. Might be fresh out of the hospital or coming back from the hospital. Um, they're a bit higher, they're a little bit sicker. Um, so you just want to um, keep that in mind. <clears throat> So I have here the most prescribed medication in each group. And for group D, obviously refer. Pneumonia. Let's talk about pneumonia. So pneumonia is um, actually one of the most, can be deadly um, in certain patients, but once in the cold and flu season occur, it can be deadly. It's infection. Um, usually you see pneumonia in your college campuses, um, in the military. There was a, a couple of barracks that had pneumonia outbreaks, especially in the winter. Um, highly populated area, nursing homes, um, college dormitories, areas like that. Um, that pneumonia bacteria upper respiratory infection, um, not really treated. A kid has a flu um, or strep and it just travels and it stays in the body and uh, exacerbates um, different functions and then there you go, you've got pneumonia. Um, obviously it can get more complicated than that, especially when you get uh, older, but um, pneumonia can be very detrimental, especially in the older population and the immunocompromised. So well, there's one thing, a couple of bacteria we have to watch out for with pneumonia. So your atypical is the um, Microplasma pneumoniae and um, clindo, Clindophil uh, pneumoniae. Um, and that's your walking pneumonia. That's for your kids that, you know, they've been walking around, I'm not really feeling all that great, and they come to you at the walk-in clinic and you're just like, you have pneumonia. Do you know that? It's like, yeah, there's some reason why I haven't been feeling all, all that good. Um, usually um, that's your typical patient presentation with the atypical pneumonia. Um, for your community acquired pneumonia, those are either the very young or the very old. Um, 
kid comes in, he had strep throat last week or two weeks ago, and he's not really um, looking good. He's not getting better. Um, the strep cleared out, but he's still feeling bad. You want to, you know, do that chest x-ray, make sure that kid doesn't have a pneumonia or kid has a flu or your older patient has a flu and he can't really quite kick that off and he's got COPD and asthma and you do an HX x-ray, um, he can't really kick that flu and you see some consolidation in his lungs. Um, that's when you want to um, go ahead and admit that patient, especially if they're older than um, that 65 mark because they can, uh, the flu, the pneumonia can kill, uh, especially in our older population. Um, sinus symptoms is going to have chest pain, cough, fatigue, crackles, inhale tactile, increase tactile fritative, um, tactile femoridus, so it's like your 99 or E, E, um, and you're going to see consolidation on that x-ray right there. Pneumonia usually occurs in the bases of the lungs versus um, other uh, respiratory or lung infections. So there's vi viral versus bacteria. Vac uh, bacteria is most common um, with strep pneumoniae. Just um, heads up right there. So how are you going to treat this? So there's two ways that you can go about this. It's for your, for your patients that are healthy. Your healthy patient that, you know, has been walking around, doing fine, you're going to prescribe them doxy, macrolide, or um, amoxicillin, penicillin. For your not healthy patients, your 65-year-old um, or a 50-year-old with um, asthma and COPD, um, you're going to want to give them that fluoroquinolone, the respiratory fluoroquinolone, fluoroquinolone uh, such as your Levaquin, or give them a macrolide with augmentin combination. Um, good way to remember that is mad lung ma. So uh, I've got that all down there for you guys. Um, so if you guys want to ask any more questions about that, let me know. But pneumonia is pretty straightforward. Next you have tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So one of the main signs and symptoms is that nighttime sweating, weight loss, um, those are like the main times you'll see nighttime sweating. Tuberculosis and um, Tuberculosis and uh, menopause is when you're going to see that nighttime sweating, lots of sweating, or HIV. Those are your three differentials for that. But with TB, um, you're going to see fever. You're going to want to do an x-ray. And um, when you do the x-ray, you're going to have that um, upper lobe. You're going to have the upper lobe um, infiltrates, infiltrates in the upper lobe. And... For patients that are immunocompromised, when you're doing the skin test, they're going to be at a 5. Um, for immigrants, they're going to be at a 10. And for the immigrants and um, healthcare providers, they're going to be at a 10. Um, general public is going to be at 15. Um, if you have someone that you are living with that has TB, then uh, that's going to be at a 10. Diagnosis, you can diagnose through sputum culture, and um, rifampin is going to be your medication of choice. It's actually four, three different types of medication, um, and it's going to be a very long haul for um, patients that contract tuberculosis. So six to 12 months, a lot of times. Um, you can also do prophylactic um, tuberculosis for patients that are working in high acuity areas, um, such as the hospital or, you know, areas such as prisons that are exposed to lots of patients with tuberculosis. I really want to go over the CURB 65 because this is one of the areas where, um, as providers, it can be imperative that 
we um, CURB 65 are patients. So it stands for confusion, and that's usually for the 65 stands for our older patients. Um, if they're confused, their BUN is greater than 9, respiratory is greater than 30, blood pressure is 90 over 60, or in that range. They're older, they have other comorbidities, and they've been in the hospital, um, and they've come back um, home to the nursing home, rehab, um, wherever it is that they've come back, and they see you, and um, they're still not looking too good. You want to send them back to the hospital, um, especially since if they're at home. You don't want them to, you know, discharge your patient. They go home and they die. That's the absolute worst. Um, so there, there is that. So another, another disease process that really hits our upper respiratory is bronchitis. Bronchitis occurs usually in our cold and flu season and, um, it really hits our asthmatic patients and patients with respiratory issues in general. So um, they've had a recent cold and they've got this prolonged nagging cough for over two weeks. Um, we're not going to prescribe them antibiotics for bronchitis, but we will give them those NSAIDs, Tylenol, um, albuterol, and antitussives just to help them open up their alveoli and get them um, that extra help in the lungs so that they can have um, adequate gas exchange. So here's a quick reference of all things that I've used. And as always, if you guys have questions, please leave them in the comments below. Have a great day. Bye-bye.